Uh, we have a huge show, uh, yeah. mega quick hits, but there's one place to start, which is the most exciting title race in Europe. Sorry, Liga. It's uh, fine. It is in La Liga. Uh, and when the dust is settled from the weekend, we have Atletico Madrid after the nil-nil draw with Barcelona. Two points clear of Barca and Real Madrid. Yeah. Real Madrid themselves uh, drawing 2-2 with Sevilla, who are fourth, thanks to a last-ditch deflected goal from Tony Kroos. So who better to unpack this with than Sid Lowe? Sid, let's get right into it. Uh, Real Madrid, I thought uh, Sevilla played them off the park in the first half playing without a, without a recognized striker. This, was this a hangover? And is this another example of kind of that Real Madrid never say die until the end quality that, or just sheer dumb luck that they get the, uh, that, that they get the equalizer in, uh, in, in, in such, a, such a mad way? Because Kroos' shot was definitely going out, I thought. You know, in that first half watching Sevilla, I was, it, it kind of brought to mind some of those performances from Barcelona under Pep Guardiola where Sevilla just had the ball, just moved it and moved it and moved it and kept moving it. And it was, it, the, the degree of control was was really quite something. And watching up close, because I was at Valdebebas as well, was was very, very striking. The the ease with which Sevilla seemed to be able to control the game. It's true that they didn't create a huge amount of chances, but they were much, much the better side. Although Madrid did react. In terms of your, your kind of question about, is this Real Madrid always finding a way through? Last night, the fact that they didn't win made me think, well, you know, this time they didn't find a way through. But actually, if you look at the table and the way it is now, that 93rd minute goal from Tony Cruz or Eden Hazard, depending on who you're giving it to, actually could be huge because it keeps Real Madrid above Barcelona. And it also puts Real Madrid in a position now going into the final three games that, yes, the league title is in Atletico Madrid's hands. But if Atletico Madrid do so much as draw now, it goes back into Real Madrid's hands. And and obviously without that goal, they would have needed Atletico Madrid to lose one of those three games, not just to not just to draw it. There you go. He does maths too. Now, speaking of, of Atletico, that game against uh, uh, Barcelona on Saturday, Jules, I, I thought this was a missed opportunity for Barcelona. Um, not necessarily because they played better, but because I just thought because of what Sid said as well, they, they had to win. They this. had to win. Yeah, they had to win really where you could argue that and we mentioned about we mentioned we said about it on Friday night on the FC show that you could see what Atletico could go for in the draw although I thought they played really well in the first half created some chances I was just very disappointed by, by what Barca did I mean Messi could have almost scored the goal of the season but didn't in the end but there was not enough creativity I thought just not enough clear, clear cut chances and for a game that you had to win so close to the end of the season where winning La Liga you know, was was like a long dream a few months ago, and you don't do enough. You don't go for it. I, I don't know. I thought he was very disappointed. You on board with that, Sid? Well, yeah, I am. Um, but I think you can look beyond even just this game. Uh, I think if you look at their defeat against Granada, um, not last Thursday, the Thursday before, and at that point, that was the point at which they could have put themselves in a position in which the league was entirely in their own hands. And they didn't take it. They were 1-0 up and they, and they got beaten. And you're right, going into this game, I thought Atletico Madrid... Actually, there's a certain parallel between the Sevilla-Real Madrid game and the, and the Atletico Madrid-Barcelona game in that the supposedly less big of the two teams involved is a side that dominates the first half in both cases, maybe even a little bit more than the first half in, in Atletico Madrid's case. There was a reaction from Barcelona, but there was a, a, a really significant lack of... I don't know if it's urgency or character or an awareness that the league was slipping away and they absolutely had to win. They would argue, of course, that they had a very good chance late on for Dembele and he probably should have scored it. They will argue that they did carry the game to, to Atletico a little bit. But but I think it's a recurring theme. If you look at the results against the other two teams in the title race, if we're ruling out Sevilla here, which I think we have to, Barcelona in the potentially 12 points against Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid have picked up one. And that's been, in a way, the story of the season. Mm. There has been something that has just fallen short, whether that's character, whether it's a little bit of quality, whether it's something extra. And each time you could look at particular moments of the game and say they were unfortunate, but it just hasn't happened. Um, and, I, and I think that's the feeling that if Barcelona aren't in this title race, having been given the opportunity to get back into it, it's because they're probably just not quite good enough when it comes to the games that are, that are big. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.